trying to get set to take the lead. Third down and goal from the five. Harrington flings. Pass. Caught. Touchdown. McMichael, his first touchdown of the season. Harrington's second touchdown toss of the game. McMichael had more catches than any other receiver or tight end in the NFL without a touchdown coming into this game. And when you see a defense that just goes in the end zone, they want to react to the quarterback. Joey Harrington, we talked about it earlier. He has been good at that and just stuffed it in there to McMichael. R.A. makes it 14-10. 44th reception of the year for McMichael. His first touchdown in Miami's first lead of the game. After winning one for the thumb, fans in the Steel City are looking for a repeat. With the new Steel Curtain defense still intact, the Steelers should be near the top of the league once again. With running back Willie Parker, receiver Heinz Ward, and quarterback Ben Roethlisberger returning, the Steelers enter 2006 as one of the favorites in the AFC. Here's McMichael going to go in the end zone and hook up. Watch the defenders. Just look at the quarterback. And Joy Harrington knows that the defense is waiting for him to react. So you've got to get rid of the football quickly. That's probably his greatest strength. And that is a tough catch. And it's a touchdown. And look at Joy Harrington. Doesn't show a lot of emotion usually. Getting on the other side. His interception set up the Dolphins at the nine. Well, you look at Harrington again. He's had only four incompletions, and three of them were drops that ended drives. You, know, you, you talked about that, Jim. His quick release has hurt the wide receivers. They're not used to it. Sometimes he, just, he does throw it, I think, a little too quick sometimes. Kaysan on the return. And he hurdles out to the 17. That is it before Lehan makes the tackle MetLife teaming up with us today with the aerial coverage of Detroit they had their big annual Thanksgiving parade here the great American Thanksgiving parade that dates back almost as long as the football tradition in well, Detroit we drove by it it was crowded and it's it's just it's a neat look it's a tremendous tradition as you talk about Jim and and uh, as you talk to what did Rod Marinelli say after you take the job here in Detroit after you they hire you they start talking about the Thanksgiving Day game. Well he remembers as a kid talking about Marinelli watching Detroit and Green Bay playing on Thanksgiving. They did that for a number of years in a row. Jim Taylor versus Joe Schmidt. He loved to watch the matchup. Pretty good names. 148 to go in the half. The Lions have two timeouts. Down the field, and that is knocked away. Williams had it on his fingertips for a moment, and Ronaldo Hill stripped it away. Ronaldo Hill and Jeremiah Bell, the two safeties for the Dolphins, just have, they got a chance to be special players, and they can't cover Roy Williams, so what's he do? He waits till Roy Williams puts his hands up, then he just sticks his in the middle of him and knocks the football away. Excellent technique and a good play by Hill. Second down and 10. And Kitna again and that's wide of Curry with Hill on the coverage. Miami's going to get a chance if they can make one more defensive play to do a little more before halftime on offense. Kitna's hit four of his last 13. 10 nothing early after nine minutes. Down to 10. As Curry, who falls, would have had the first. And he knows it. And it'll be a yard shy of the first. So the Lions will punt. 
Timeout called by the Dolphins with 127 to go in the half. NASN, the North American Sports Network, a new and exciting sports channel dedicated to the best in live North American sports 24-7. NASN is the best of live NFL, including the Super Bowl Live, up to 175 regular season NHL games and the Stanley Cup Finals, comprehensive coverage of the MLB regular and postseason, and exclusive college football and basketball. With the best daily news, highlights, and analysis, NASN is your channel for the best in live North American sports. Visit NASN.com for scheduling news and information. About to get the football again. And a chance to do a little business here before halftime. This doesn't fly too far. Welker able to catch it on the run before he's walloped at the 48 yard line. Casey Fitzsimmons on the hit. Survivor Cook Islands will one castaway have the power to decide the fate of the game. You'll find out tonight on a new survivor on America's most watched network. You know, too, Jim, talking about Joey Harrington, the Miami Dolphins staff, you know, they, they admit now it's time to judge him because he's learned the system. He's got some experience running this Dolphins offense. And maybe most importantly, he's got some confidence after three victories in a row. Boy, well, he has confidence going right now based on this first half performance. And the completion to Ronnie Brown pays for it quickly. Dre Bly on the tackle, five yard gain. Corey Redding getting pressure on Harrington, wouldn't let him throw it down the field. Less than a minute to go in the half. And two timeouts. Harrington on target. Welker inside the 40 for a first down. Fletcher on the coverage. Harrington, who last week led the Dolphins to victory over Minnesota. He had been 0-6 in his career as a quarterback at Detroit against the Vikings. Now trying to come back and pin one on his former team. With Marty Booker. Another hookup and another strike by Joy Harrington. He throws a football. He throws beautiful spirals. So you go, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, it keeps him on target most of the time. But when a football is spinning and it's a spiral, it makes it so much easier for the receivers to catch. I'd say that. That, that spiral was about as tight as the one we have on the Sim Spotlight intro video. Yeah, we had to look through about 30 throws to find one, but it's okay. <laughs> Second down and three. Much better. Pass wide of the mark. There was some pressure coming in on the quarterback. 26 seconds to go in the half. And you know, even when Joey Harrington was here in Detroit, Jim. And they had at times awful pass protection. He, he's tough to tough to sack. He can make a decision quickly. And even Nick Saban says maybe too quickly sometimes. It's okay every once in a while in a game to take a sack. Just know where you're on the field in the situation. But Lions finding out their old teammate hard to get to him. Third down and three. Chambers without a catch in this game lined up far to the left. Harrington's pass behind Welker, but a flag. Looks like it's going to be against the Lions secondary. Illegal use of hands to the face. Defense number 21. A five-yard penalty on the first down. It's called on Jamar Fletcher. So the Dolphins will have a couple of chances to try to get a touchdown out of this before the half. Probably the toughest job of all. When you have multiple multiple wide receivers for the Dolphins, Jamar Fletcher has to cover Wes Welker, who is who is suited to be an inside receiver and be quick and move all over the place. Again, they'll have two timeouts to operate with. From the 27. Up fake. Going for the big ball. Chambers too high. Bullocks and Bryant providing the coverage. Chambers 
a big threat, but has been shut down so far today. What did Dre Bly say about Chris Chambers? You get the scouting report. He looked at him and he's 5'11. He looks like he's like 6'3. He plays very tall, but when you look at Chris Chambers, he's got the leg length of somebody who's about six foot five. 17 seconds. near the first down yardage and they'll use that first of two timeouts that they had to work with so 12 seconds time for one more toss to the end zone some people think the internet is a bad thing a place for mankind to exercise its darkest desires an open market where you can buy anything you want somewhere that is destroying the last of our privacy. Some people think the internet is a bad thing. What do you think? To make a throw to the end zone here before the half. Marinelli remembering those days on the Tampa staff when he was an assistant to Tony Dungy and they started two and eight like his First year Lions are right now finishing with four wins out of the last six. Tampa. It's almost intercepted. Fernando Bryant had a read on it, and that wouldn't have amounted to much anyway. Had the pass gone to a dolphin. No, this is almost one of those examples, Jim. Sometime as a quarterback, you it's not always just getting rid of. Because when you get rid of it too quickly sometimes, you know what that means? You don't see exactly what's going on the defensive side. So it leads to mistakes that you don't need to make. And as well as Joey has played at Miami, particularly the last three weeks, he still has had that occasional lapse like that. Fake firing to the end zone. And uh, there it is, the interception. Colt with the pick. Chambers was the target. He looked open for a minute. But Terrence Holt made up a lot of ground. And Columba Edwards had some pressure on the quarterback. On the outside, it's a good idea by Joey Harrington. He's stepping up in the pocket, not able to look Holt off. So Terrence Holt gets a run to where the football is being thrown and no matter how good you throw it, no matter how hard you try, it can't get there before he does. So the Lions at the one yard line, one snap and they'll head to the locker room with a 14-10 deficit. So the first half, the momentum initially belonging to the Lions that first possession touchdown drive and a field goal for the 10-0 lead. Then Harrington marching Miami twice and hitting on two touchdown passes. 14-10 Dolphins at the intermission. Sprint halftime report next after this message and a word from your local station. You are watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 41. Studios in the Sprint Halftime Report. I'm James Brown along with Dan Marino, Shannon Sharp, and Boomer Esaias in our score at halftime 14 10 Miami on top. Dan, we can talk football, right? Yeah, let's talk some football. <laughs> talk about that first half by you guys. Well, first of all, Joey Harrington, who a lot of pressure coming into this game. He has not thrown a touchdown on Thanksgiving Day in his first four starts with Detroit. Now with Miami, first touchdown on Thanksgiving Day to Marty Booker right there goes in, then a nice play. 
two. Randy McMichael, that's two touchdowns in the first half, playing solid, then he makes a mistake at the end of the half. Right here, you either throw it out of bounds, you got to get points out of this no matter what. I like the decision to go for it. A solid first half by Joey Harrington, except for the interception. Well, how about the drops, Dan? You know, I'm not big on that last interception. I think Nick Saban made the mistake. He should have went for the field goal there. Four drops in all for the first half of the Miami Dolphins, and Joey Harrington playing great until that last interception. Then he became Joey Harrington all of a sudden again. You know, you want to go into the locker room feeling real good about yourself and throwing that interception, not good. But the one bright spot with the Lions is the singing lion, Roy Williams, here over the top on the scene, Rock, 41-yard completion. This guy's played well all year, ladies and gentlemen, and he's played his way into one of those four receiver spots going to the Pro Bowl here. First down on the 20-yard reception. And this is what you got to like about it. Got a big guy over the middle, almost picked off one hand, grabs the ball, picks up 21, 24 yards on that completion. Roy Williams playing really well. Not good at, you know, picking the game, whether or not his team's going to win or lose, but he does play well <laughs> week in and week out. So we won't talk about who's dating whom, so let's talk about what to expect the second half. Well, if you're Nick Saban, you got to be happy with the way Joey Harrington's played, except for that mistake at the end of the half. I think they continue need to need to run Ronnie Brown. They're getting a pretty good production out of him, running the football, take some pressure off of Joey Harrington, throwing it, and defensively, they're playing well. Just keep putting pressure on Kitna. They're getting him out of the pocket. They sacked him three times, and it's a defense of oriented football Double team Roy Williams and make somebody else beat you. pressure on their quarterback. All right. Love the coaches there. All right, folks. <laughs> coming up after the game on the NFL today, we'll go back out live to Detroit for a Thanksgiving Day tradition. Phil Simms will hand out his All-Iron Award to the MVP of the game. And we'll talk live with Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver Chad Johnson. And a reminder, this Sunday, we'll be back at noon Eastern with our regular edition of the NFL Today. And we'll introduce you to a side of Chargers running back LaDainian Tomlinson you haven't seen as he helps families in need. At the end of the day, it's all about your character, your integrity as a man. That's what people remember. It ain't the way I run the football and what I do on the field is just what, who I am as a man off the field. When people get to know me, I think that's the one thing that they see. All right, folks, then week 12 continues with a slate of regional action in the early start. Some of you will see the Steelers taking on the Raiders or the Texans against the Jets. Then late game features the Raiders taking on the Chargers. LT, not only an outstanding football player, but a good character indeed. No question about it, JB. The most complete back in football, and you be, not get a whole lot of arguments as being a better player. He might be the best player in football. All right, folks, and you certainly don't want to miss this one. He is an outstanding young man. Be sure to tune in to catch that. All right, folks, coming up, we'll send you back to Detroit for a special live performance by John Fogarty as the Sprint Halftime Report continues here on CBS. The whole country is watching you. So there we are in the spotlight. Have a little entertainment for everybody who's watching. You always knew something interesting was going to happen on Thanksgiving. Everybody watches on Thanksgiving Day. My homeboy at the barbershop. It means so much to so many people. It's like a dream come true. I have the best job in America. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. And all of us at CBS echo those sentiments. We just were entertained by John Fogarty, who said, I'll see you in Kansas City. He's performing at halftime tonight of the Denver Kansas City Chiefs game. So a little doubleheader for Mr. Fogarty. Mr. Sims alongside, and uh, welcome back to Ford Field. 14 10 Miami lead. What about the second half? Well, it's going to be interesting. Uh, the Detroit Lions, can they protect John Kidna? If they do, I think he has a chance to throw it down the field and make some plays. The Miami Dolphins, I think it's all there for their passing game. Uh, we watch it. Joey Harrington giving time. They're getting open. If they catch it, they have a chance to score quite a few points, I think, in the second half. Harrington with two touchdown passes and an interception just before halftime. This game brought to you in high-definition television, and Harrington and the Dolphins will have first possession of the second half trying to win a fourth consecutive game. Hanson's kick through the smoke to Welker. Takes it down the sideline. Cuts back and still on his feet to the 47 of the Lions. Well the game started with a big kick return by the Lions that 
included then on the drive, a long pass to Roy Williams. Eventually the hook up to Dan Campbell for the lead. Hanson, 52, made it 10-0, nine minutes into the game. Harrington back to Booker to put the Dolphins on the board. And then another touchdown pass, Harrington to McMichael. And that's how we stand now, 14-10 Miami, with an excellent start off the return by Welker. A 45-yard return. And Ronnie Brown will give a couple yards back. Fernando Bryant and others coming up. Edwards. In the first half, we had 47 pass plays combined and only 18 rushes. Six penalties in that first half on the Dolphins. Well, Jim, you got two teams. Neither one of them is running very well this year, so... They just try to run it enough to keep the defense on us so they can look for opportunities to throw the football down the field. Back to Brown. He's got running room. He's got a first down. Still chugging ahead behind L.J. Shelton for 16 yards. You know, the Dolphins ran it like this against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field. And Brown had 157 yards against the Bears. Who would have thought? Yeah, I know. You know, when, when I watch the uh, Miami Dolphins, they seem to run it best in some passing situations, draw plays, just like that one there. A, a running play that takes a while to develop. The defense is thinking past, and Ronnie Brown gets up in there and gets some good yards. Harrington also three through touchdown, threw three touchdowns in that win against Chicago. So Brown getting the early work, and look at this effort, driving for another eight yards. Brady McMichael with a pivotal block on that line well a lot of things I think of as I watch this so far uh, we of course we get the opportunity to get a chance to talk to coaches and talking to Nick Saban last night what what came out of his he just coaches are so uneasy they like their schedules the schedules thrown off this week and they just they worry are we prepared are we ready that's all he could talk about was ready for a fourth straight carry, but Ernie Sims, the first round pick for the Lions out of Florida State, drops him back for a one yard loss. Saban did talk to us about how uh, his team has showed a lot of resiliency overcoming that one and six start. Well, anytime you start one and six, the fans, the media, it's gonna, of course, it's gonna be negative, and it's hard to keep the focus and the confidence of your team. They fought through it, and they, like we've said many times, three straight victories has them thinking very positively about the rest of the schedule. Third down and three. Ronnie Brown walked off holding his left wrist. And Harrington will try to run for it, but the angle cut off, and Redding rams him out of bounds about two yards shy. The fourth and about two. Paris Lennon also was chasing after Harrington. Joey Harrington, pretty good athlete. Looks like he might be able to turn the corner. Whoa, that was some hit. Whoa, is that right? And that's Corey Redding coming from the inside, an interior defensive lineman. Once a quarterback leaves the pocket, starts running the football, you can treat him as a runner, you can hit him any way you want. So Mare will try from 42 yards. 15 of 24 on the season. And this one, very pure. Mare opens up the seven-point lead for Miami. 17 unanswered by the Dolphins. Basketball returns to NASN. Visit NASN.com for scheduling news and information.
I'm Ron Winter, and we're today's game officials. On behalf of our crew and all the officials in the National Football League, we'd like to wish everyone a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Well, it was nice last night seeing Ron Winter and all the officials. We had them over for Thanksgiving uh, dinner at the hotel, and I'll just say this. They're not hungry today. <laughs> hey, you did a pretty good job yourself. I'll say they were, they were tearing it up. That was good. It was a lot of fun. Got a chance to have dinner with the whole crew, the officials, Dick Maxwell, the NFL, yep. just a lot of friends. Legendary Harvey Green Dick, was there. Dick Maxwell, yep. Harvey Green, we want to thank uh, the Dolphins PR staff and Bill Keenest of the Lions. Matt Barnhart was there from the Lions staff, but those two groups, those two PR groups, outstanding. And we had uh, an award ceremony there, Phil, for the Phil Sims Turkey Bowl. Well, we, we have a little bowling every Tuesday before Thanksgiving, a bowling tournament, the whole crew. And you're wondering why Jim Nance is not up there the, <laughs> getting a trophy, because he didn't bowl well. But uh, there we go. Steve Orloff, Chuck Sorelli, good job. You tried to put the pressure on him, announcing, and Steve was oblivious to the pressure. We gave it the... Uh, Stay loose. Gave it the master's call at 8, 18 on Sunday, and they were still... Throwing strikes. You, you know, we did. We, we tried to stop the action because, you know, we do this because we're just that way. We can't help it. And Jim gets up and announced, okay, after eight frames, this is leading, this and that. And it was a lot of fun to watch everybody try to finish it off. Our director, Mike Arnold, he got tight. Couldn't get the big spare in the tenth frame. The whole crew, very nice event. But it was, it was a lot that. of fun. Thank you for that. I'm sure Mike's glad to hear the, the tight last frame. But just the way it goes. Second down and eight for the Lions. And a sack by Carter. Kevin Carter on the sack, but you have to give it to Jason Taylor, too. And pressure on a quarterback, and that's what it's about. Watch John Kidna to his left side. Jason Taylor pushing his guy, Jeff Backus, in his face. Kitten is moving, holds it longer, and Kevin Carter, yes, gets the sack. Kevin Carter playing on Thanksgiving for the first time in his career. He's played so many consecutive games. Starts without injury. Approaching now you know, almost 200. And movement on the right side will put Kitten and company inside the 10. It looks like Tucker may have moved. Ball start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. Been a tough day so far for the right tackles of the Detroit Lions. That's Rex Tucker. They put Rick DeMullen in there for a series. I don't know why. I, we, we don't know if there was an injury or they just wanted to switch him up, but the Dolphins getting a lot of pressure off of that position. And three false starts on the game for Detroit. get back flag down Harris got the handle and Taylor is changing a little pushing with Jeff Backus I believe holiday may not have gotten back for the Miami defensive front offside defense number 91 yep. the neutral zone to snap Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. You know, for Nick Saban, now with this seven-point lead, coming back here to Michigan, he served two five-year terms from Michigan State staff, first as a defensive back coach and defensive coordinator, then came back as the head coach, where he had huge success, leaving for LSU, and then, of course, LSU won to Miami a year ago. And 17 more pressure on Kitna. And they drag him down for another sack. Holiday and Thomas combining to drop Kitna, and the Lions will be forced to punt from the end zone. Well, the Detroit Lions, Mike Mart says, well, we can throw the football. The question is, can we block them? And the answer is no. They have constantly, since the first drive of the game, pressured John Kitna. Mike March just shaking his head. Harris again, short kick. Welker. And there is a flag. 
but Miami for the second time in this half barring a penalty here will start on the Detroit end of the field plus territory there's a second flag also back in the area where the, the ball was booted so we got two different infractions here I believe and we saw Ronnie Brown walk off the field earlier mentioning how he was favoring his left hand he has been taken to the locker room with that hand injury and the Dolphins say questionable he'll return there are two fouls on the play Brennan returns illegal block in the back return team number 57 that penalty is declined holding return team number 98 penalized at the end of the kick 10 yards and first down so Keith Adams and Matt Roth both flagged will take the Roth infraction there's Brown going inside a moment ago Miami leads it on a windy day in week 10 Nathan Vasher made a 108 yard dash for history Put out one and right at the 15 get back up field they got a wall up the right side is the greatest Super Bowl team of all time. You can log on to America's Game on NFL.com and vote for your choice. It's only on NFL.com. Here in the booth, I noticed Phil's been pushing for Super Bowl 21's victors on NFL.com. Harrington now rolling and firing in the area of Chris Chambers. First, still with no no receptions to this point. What's this, Phil? Well, it's the big Iron Man trophy coming, Jim. That's what it is. Tight security. Because it's a trophy. You want to steal it. You know, I know you love trophies, man. I've, I've learned that about you. I hope you, you like You like competition. You I do. And you want to win, and you're not above cheating. Oh, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> Take that back. Welker. Feisty for seven, maybe eight. Again, Chambers without a catch to this point. Well, I stacked your bowling team on Tuesday night, and you still couldn't get it done. Tried my best. We did not cheat. But you talk about who's going to win this award so far, and, you know, we'll kind of keep a tab going along, but Joey Harrington, no touchdowns in his Thanksgiving Day performances. Today, two of them, 96.1 quarterback rating. Played pretty well up to this point. And he's got a third and three. with the sure hands and the first down at the 46. Welker, when we met with him earlier this year, told us about how Tim Dwight, early in his career, because he was originally on the San Diego roster, went to camp and everything with him, right. how Tim Dwight told him what it would take to get in this league. Well, first thing he said, lose weight. Because Wes Welker comes, you come into pro football, you think, I gotta be big. And he's about 10 to 12 pounds overweight. When you're receiver, it's about being quick, and fast. Welker with over 50 catches on the season. Sammy Morris has replaced Ronnie Brown. Picks up about three before Alex Lewis drags him down. And tomorrow we've got college football. Jamarcus Russell and the Bayou Bengals take on Darren McFadden and the Razorbacks. We'll have our guys there, Vern and Gary Danielson. Then Saturday, the Yellow Jackets and the Bulldogs, Georgia Tech, Georgia, all beginning with the TIAA Craft College Football today coming up on this holiday weekend on CBS. My goal this weekend to get bed sores on my back. Watch it. I'm going to watch a lot of football. Second down and seven. 
Well, I might get up at some point. You're going to get up and go to a couple of high school games, too. That's right. That's right. Chambers' first catch of the game is to get him going. Goes for five yards. Third and two on the way. Stanley Wilson and Daniel Bullets. Well, this is a point of the game. You got seven minutes to go in the third quarter, and you're down a touchdown if you're the Detroit Lions, and you've got to determine. The way we're playing defense, it's doing okay, but you can't let this offense go down and get points. So you got to get more aggressive, and sooner or later, you're going to have to take a chance. They have not blitzed Joey Harrington. I do not think I've seen a blitz the whole day. Already converted the last third down on this drive, and 